Hello everyone, it's Diane. I'm getting ready to get started on the um, masculine journal that I'll be making. This journal is for my customer who doesn't want coffee dyed papers in her journals. So I am over here at my coloring stations where I stamp and spray and stuff like that um, to color the blank side of these pages. Let me show you the book cover that I'm using. This was in a purchase from last year, I think, Man on the Box. And um, one of my customers had, I, have a, I had a list of books that she wanted me to make journals out of. Um, so like I've said before, I'm not taking custom orders right now, but I still have three titles on my list from this particular customer. So this is one. And I wanted to use um, Ephemera's Vintage Gardens um, Gentlemen and Scholars kit on this. And then I have this one that I just got. I believe I just got this one this year. So I'm hoping to be able to make a second one that I can put in my shop. But this one will have coffee dye papers. So I have pulled out a few things in preparation. I've got a few napkins that I might be able to use. This looks really, the colors and the style of the images matches um, this Gentleman and Scholars kit very well. So I'll probably use that. And then I just have this napkin that someone sent me and this tissue paper that came in a, wrapped around something I believe that someone sent me. I also pulled out some stencils. I have quite a few here. I won't be using all of them, but um, I just pulled out ones that would be suited for a masculine journal. So I can either rub ink through them or spray. This one I would definitely spray. I wouldn't try rubbing ink over that. This one is a little difficult to rub ink over, but I do. I have done it, but when you have all these little things, you can catch your little... Um, tool on them and it's a little hard. So let's just, well before I get started, I have some sprays that I pulled out. I have warm brown, which I made myself, avocado, and then I have this Dilusions chopped pesto and black velvet from Heidi Swap. Some of the purchased ones can be dark, darker than I want for a journal page because you still want to be able to journal on them. So I wanted a lighter brown too. I do like to make my own. I just buy these little spray bottles in the travel size section in um, Health and Beauty Aids at Walmart. And I just have bottles of acrylic, you know, regular craft paints. I don't know which of these colors of brown I want to use. So I'm just gonna check out the color. This one is a warmer tone, but this one is lighter. I think I'll go with the lighter one. So, let me put the cap back on. I'll have a big glop. Just squeeze some, I put water in this bottle already. Just squeeze some paint in there. You can add mica powders um, and stuff like that, but I don't want it for for this one because it adds a shine and glimmer and this is a masculine journal just shake it up real well that's a nice color it'll add color without making it so dark that you can't write over it So let's just get to it now. So here's the first signature. I might have to trim these pages because I probably won't be using lace. I think I might find um, a trim that I can use that's not lacy, so that would help. So we'll start right out with this very first page of the signature. And we'll do a spray here. I think. 
Which one do I want to start with? I think I'll start with this one. It's called Measured by Tim Holtz. I don't want there to be a line of demarcation here. So I'm going to get a scrap paper. I think I'll just add some dots. I'm going to be, this is going to smear what I just sprayed because it's wet, but that's okay. I'm going to use, let me try this, see how dark this um, pesto is. Maybe it's not even going to work. Oh, I guess that one's clogged. And it's pretty full, but I've had it a while. Looks pretty dark. I'll work on unclogging that. Yeah, that's pretty dark. I would have to use that sparingly. put the cap back on it after I tested it and then I'm trying to push down on the cap to spray. It didn't work pushing down on the cap. Hopefully that's not too dark. I could blot it a little bit. trying to get clear crisp images which is a good thing because I'm not but I am just trying to add some color to the page so there's our page I'll probably add a little green ink around the edges did a bunch of coffee dyeing yesterday for upcoming journals and I had to remember to pull pages out for this one that I I pulled for the masculine journals and I remembered in time that I wasn't supposed to coffee dye all of them so I'm going to get some green ink here um, looking for, I think it's moss, forest moss. Let me see if that's a good color. Yep, that works. I'm sorry about the noise when I use my Distress Ink because my table shakes and then I've got things rattling on the table. Sometimes it really bugs me, but mostly I'm used to it. I 
The cover is green, as you saw, so I'm using browns and greens in this. All right, I like the way that page turned out. This page will be right here, and it looks pretty stark next to that. I don't know what I'll be doing on this page as far as embellishing, but let me just spray it a little bit so that it looks better with what we've got there. know that my work surface isn't entirely within the frame but I've got the tripod one of the tripod legs in between my knees if I got it any closer I wouldn't be able to work I think I want just a little more brown in there I think I'll use try these big dots or the brick wall one. I want to use a little bit darker brown around the edges. Let's see how precisely I can spray. I use the term precisely very loosely. This is one that I had made before. It's called Warm Brown. There, I think you can still write on that page. goes through the other side so it adds some color to that side also. I may end up inking around the edges of this one but I'm just going to move on for now. So this is a page from the Gentleman and Scholars paper. This is vintage from a vintage ledger book. So here's the next one we need to do. Now instead of spraying this one, um I'm going to decoupage a piece of napkin onto it and then I will probably add some color with, um, well, I'm going to use this napkin so that'll add color. I'm thinking these black and white ones, <coughs> after I Mod Podge them on, I will add some color with ink. This one looks like I can just pull it and peel it came right apart. And I think it's only one layer left. So that was easy. I don't necessarily want the Eiffel Tower. It's not that I don't want it, but I'm not... I'm going to try to avoid it just because it's not a Paris-themed journal. 
I just like these other parts. I'm just tearing napkin here. Put a small piece there. I don't want to take up too much of the writing space. I want to do the Mod Podge before I do the color because the um, Mod Podge will run when I get it wet, or the the ink will run, the distress ink will run when I get it wet with Mod Podge, so we want to do the wet first. That's a really wide foam brush. I don't need it that wide, so... I get them really cheap at the flea market, so I just take what they have. It's in a, a bag of assorted sizes, and I just trim it down to the plastic. I can't trim it any further. I could trim up, up there a little bit, but that's good. I'm going to add the Mod Podge in here. Put a little water in there just to thin it out. Plus it makes it go further. And I'm looking for a stick to stir it with. This brush is still a little big. So we're having another rainy day, and the guy who came and checked my roof out the other day hasn't come back. So I've got to call him and see if he can't, if he doesn't have time to do it, he's got to let me know so I can get somebody to take care of it. I've got buckets and towels upstairs, up in the attic, catching the drips. I think it's supposed to rain most of today, and it rained all night, I think. I'm just going to let that dry a little more thoroughly before I start inking it. should probably put the lid on that before I spill it. Okay, next page. And 
this one I will use this distress ink and my tool. I just kind of move the stencil around and put color where I think it needs it. And because this is such a stark white page, I'm going to put it around the edge also. jar. That's better. I had a glass jar sitting on my table for cleaning paint brushes, but it was rattling too much. Okay, that looks good. This page I printed on parchment paper, so it does have some color, but I'm, I am going to ink around the edges. So that takes care of that signature, except for adding some ink to this page. I'll dry it a little bit more. For, oh, here they are. Didn't know what I did with the other signatures. So I'm just going to move on to the second, the second one that I need to work on in this signature and add napkin to it. Just add some of this script. I like this little ticket thing too.
I'm going to use a smaller brush this time. That's better. So I have two weeks, <clears throat> two weeks to get a lot of stuff done, and then I'm going to take a little vacation. I haven't taken a vacation in three years, and I've been working, so to speak, seven days a week since I quit my job <laughs> because I'm trying to take care of my shop and my customers, and <clears throat> this is fun work, though. But I really don't take time to relax. So I'm giving myself a little vacation. I'm just going to go stay in a hotel and do some thinking. So I will be closing my shop for that one week. And then I'll be back. I've been on for almost half an hour now, so <clears throat> I'm going to stop the camera and I'll Mod Podge onto the page for the third signature. I want to do all the Mod Podging while I have it out. And um, I'll be back to show you some more. Bye.